greatness from small beginnings. That is the story of many great things. Man's world was first created when apes climbed down from trees. Our first great invention, fire, came from two stones striking each other. Cities first came into being when man congregated and Rome first awoke as a slum on seven hills. This is a story of how a school from small beginnings would grow to one of the greatest schools in the world and from its fortress would shape its nation. This is the story of Royal College. In the rear veranda of St. Paul's Church in Wolfendal, Sri Lanka's greatest and perhaps its most enduring institution would first to life awake. Rev. Joseph Marsh, though an ordained priest, found his calling in teaching the youth of colonial Ceylon. Under his tutelage, Royal College would find its beginnings as Hill Street Academy, as a small private school with a student count of no more than 20. Of course, as was the case for many things in colonial Ceylon, at the time, the only recipient of an education of high standard were reserved for those of the burger community. Little would those original pupils know that their alma mater would welcome all those who call themselves Sri Lanka into its hallowed halls. The date of Monday, the 4th of January in the year 1836, Hill Street Academy is named the Colombo Academy. Reverend Joseph Mas is officially appointed by the Governor of Ceylon as its headmaster. Kalambu Academy is now a state school. Governor Wilma Thornton expresses his will to establish a good standard of education in the island and thus exercises his powers to grant Colombo Academy whatever amenities it requires, seeing its operation as imperative to the education of the youth of Colombo and eventually the nation. On the 1st of February that same year, Colombo Academy moved to Moore Street and into a two-storied house, begins its operations anew with a roster of 109 students. However, the school's stay at Moore Street would only last four months, as it would inch ever closer to its eventual home. In any case, due to his ailing health, the founder of Royal College, Reverend Marsh, retired in 1839. He was succeeded by another of the Royal Flock's greatest shepherds, Dr. Brockhoff's book. Under Brock's leadership, the institution shows substantial improvements and changes, including the establishment of the Central School Commission, the Turner Prize, and the renaming of Colombo Academy as Queen's College. His tenure was also notable for new turning distinguished pupils like Charles A. Lawrence and Ponnambulam Arrachal. Reverend Darkov Broke took charge in 1842 and had a significant impact on the school's development. Despite many challenges, Broke guided the academy for 28 years. He prioritized all-round education, Christian values, and moral development. The institution's progress gained positive recognition even if an increase in fees led to a temporary decline in enrollment. The staff expanded and notable teachers arrived in 1845. Adequate facilities necessitated the Cadjan Shield's construction, later replaced by a brick and tile building. The curriculum covered a wide range of subjects, and the academy was in good hands. From 1849 to 1858, the Colombo Academy faced a tumultuous period 
marked by significant adjustments due to financial challenges brought on by the 1848 Financial Depression. In 1849, three English masters were discontinued. The model school was closed, and upper school fees increased from six shillings to one pound. This left only Bork and Caldwell on the staff. In 1851, there were recommendations to close the school by the school commission, but petitions from the burghers and Sinhalese communities emphasized the value of the unsectarian academy, leading to its continuation. The government decided to give the school another year, and public petitions resulted in a compromise, setting the school fees at 10 shillings per month and boosting attendance. The arrival of Mr. G. Todd after Dr. Bork brought further reforms, including the abolishment of the Board of Education and the adoption of innovative teaching methods that put it above the rest of the schools operating on the island at the time. Other than that, Queen's College to us was just a school for those first generations of young boys who walked the path to man's estate. The school hours were from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. and from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. The student population grew from 65 to 280 over three years, and by 1860, there were 10 classes with varying numbers of students, some having up to 38 pupils. In 1868, the academy had 313 students in its role. Queen's College remained at St. Sebastian Hill, educating pupils and producing men of exceptional quality. In 1881, during Principal Carl's tenure, Queen Victoria granted her royal consent to rename the Colombo Academy as the Royal College Halam. The Gazette notification giving Her Majesty's approval to change the name of the school appeared on the 31st of July, 1881. The premises at St. Sebastian Hill consisted of a single story except for the principal's bungalow. The structure was not suited for a modern school. The classrooms were separated by partitions, which were not conducive to a healthy learning environment. As Royal College had outgrown its modest abode at St. Sebastian Hill, Principal Charles Artley appealed to Governor Sir Henry Macallum to relocate the college. The government decided to shift the college to Cinnamon Gardens and approved the construction of a new college on Thurston Road, allocating a sum of 250,000 rupees for this purpose. On the 31st of May 1911, Governor Macallum laid the foundation stone at Thurston Road. On the 27th of April 1913, Principal Hartwing made 152 royalties to the new premises on Thurston Road, which is now the University of Kalam. This marked the transition of Royal College after 78 years at St. Sebastian Hill to Thurston Road, bringing about a significant change in its history. The new Royal College was built on a triangular piece of land at the intersection of Thurston Road and Serpentine Road, covering approximately 17 acres. The buildings faced south and included the main block, science block, manual instruction department, the principal's bungalow and other outbuildings. There was also space reserved for the construction of a college hall in the future. The main block was a two-story building with a central tower and pavilions at each end. It contained classrooms, lecture rooms, the principal's office, and more. The principal's bungalow was in the northeast corner of the site, offering a view of the race course. The entire college was designed in the domestic Gothic style and was intended for future expansions. The buildings were completed and the college was transferred to them in 1913. In 1917, the decision was made to amalgamate the Royal College and the Training College English School into a single school known as the Royal College under the headmastership of Mr. C. Hartley. This decision preserved the Royal College's existence. Plans for a new Royal College building were drawn up in 1918 and approved by the government. Construction began in 1919 and continued into the early 1920s. When the police raised its mounted division in 1921, Royal College would be forced to move to a new location. This new location, which they would fully move to in 1923, is located on a quieter part of Colombo, as opposed to Wolfendal or Moore Street, and would go on to be the face of what would eventually become the greatest school in Sri Lanka. That address would be Reed Avenue. By September 1923, the entire school was united under one roof in the new building. 
The formal opening and prize giving ceremony took place at 5 pm on October 10, 1923, with encouragement to retain the buildings for the Royal College. It has now been 100 years since we moved here. We will stay here for 100 years more. In all this time, we have achieved much. We have learnt of books and men, and we have learnt to play the game of life. Life at Reed Avenue has not been passive for Royal College. Early into its residence at Cinnamon Gardens during the outbreak of the Second World War, the school was used as barracks and a military hospital for Allied soldiers. While the adjoining race force was used as a landing and takeoff strip for RA aircraft, in its own way, Royal College has fought for the right side of history more than once. While it never saw military use ever again, the war memorial in front of the college's main building stands as a silent but strong reminder to royalists about the values of duty, courage and noble sacrifice. After the war ended, Royal College would go on to uncurl its wings and evolve into the institution we know today. It has produced leaders of the country, freedom fighters, leaders of national and religious movements, distinguished members of the Sri Lankan clergy, sportsmen, lawmakers, medical professionals, in short, the men who built Sri Lanka. Under Major H.L. Reid, the college crest that we now know today, the prefect system as well as the school song that we sing every morning would come into being. It would be under Mr. L. H. W. Sampson that the college flag would be the first hoisted with the royal crest in its centre. It would be this crest that all royal prefects would wear from the year 1924 onwards when the very first badges would be handed out at the annual prize giving. Mr. E. L. Bradby in his last year would leave to college his most lasting contribution to college in the form of the Bradby Shield. The annual rugby encounter played between Trinity College Candy and Royal College Colombo that is today the most celebrated rugby match of the nation. Pupils themselves would go on to become principals such as Mr. J.C.A. Correra, a student during Reed's tenure as a principal. In 1957, during Principal Dudley Kenneth George De Silva's tenure, the British crown that adorned the college crest would be replaced with the Candian crown that remains to this day. The Royal College's transformation from a colonial gift to a nation treasure would be complete. Three years later, in 1960, Royal College would reach its 125th anniversary. Mr. C. T. M. Fernando's tenure, the most notable event that took place was the celebration of 150th anniversary of Royal College, which was conducted with much fanfare. The celebrations kicked off on July 26, 1985, when Jayajavadana Pavilion was opened by His Excellency Jayajavadana President of the Democratic Socialist Republic of Sri Lanka. The impact that Royal College has had on Sri Lankan history is immeasurable. Where one walks in Colombo, each street has a name and every name has a story behind it. Whatever story it tells, they all began at Reed Avenue. And all those illustrious names were first mere names on a register in a Royal College classroom. Such is the importance of Royal College. The Sri Lankan Republic, in a sense, was born here as it was the halls of Royal College that the first Republican constitution of the country was drafted and ratified. Royal College's history in Sri Lankan's history, great royalists, without exception, have gone on to be great Sri Lankans. Every mighty hero of modern Sri Lanka was first a schoolboy walking through the bow gates. And every man who has passed the way of the Sri Lankan's growth and journey would first walk the roads of men in state at Reed Avenue. Such is the importance of these halls. They are not mere dwellings, not more classrooms for teachers to lecture students. They represent the genesis of triumph, of innovation, of trailblazing. They are the garden in which seeds of greatness were and first plant. Bounded by red bricks and whitewashed walls are numerous classrooms. 
they are melting pots of culture of lived experience where the haughty noble is taken down a peg to be humble and where the pauper is uplifted to stand shoulder to shoulder with those who come from privilege it is a place where racist learns of tolerance and the coward learns of bravery it is a place where lonely finds company and where the rascal meets responsibility and duty royalists are not perfect they do not walk into the gates made of marble but are molded into a role model such is the importance of this building that has now stood for a century the main building that now stands as a landmark of colombo and indeed of sri lanka is a cradle of greatness within the main hall its walls carry the names of those who came before us it is not to rest on our laurels that we inscribe those names on our walls but to remind ourselves that every royalist who walks these halls has it in them to have their name written on a wall every royalist has it in them to have their names written on the pages of history that is what this building means to us looking from the inside it is the birthplace of beautiful things of poetry of art of science of national policy of great and unending ambition for those of us who have sat and walked and laughed within these buildings it is simply home we royalists are lucky to grow up on the shoulders of greatness not for one moment do we forget that every brick that makes these halls carries the spirit of those who came before us our legacy is not the facade of this building but the character that is molded within its halls honor duty brotherhood these are the lasting legacies of the building that all royalists call home it is now a century since reed avenue started being home to royal college a hundred years on young men still preserve the spirit that first to life awoke and young men still learn to play the game we strive for greater things while preserving the greatness before us just as those who came before us did almost 2 centuries ago at hill street academy <laughs>